Hello, MEGen 300. Uh, today we're going to be talking about filters and how you can use those in your design project to eliminate noise and detect your reflected optical signal from as far away as possible. All right, so let's talk about generally what a, a filter is. A filter is some sort of device or algorithm that's going to selectively remove signal components. Right? Normally we're talking about removing components based off their frequency. So given if a filter will pass certain frequencies and then stop other frequencies. Okay, um, the filter can it be electronic like we do in in this class, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It can be mechanical. So like your car's suspension is a, a filter that removes certain frequencies of vibrations so that you don't feel them in the cabin. Um, they can also be optical. So we can talk about filtering light by different colors, which is the light's frequency. Um, but in this class, we're mostly talking about electronic filters. So we're taking a voltage signal, some sort of analog voltage signal, and we're going to remove certain frequencies and allow other frequencies to go through the filter. And that helps us to get rid of noise in our voltage signal. All right. So what does the filter actually do? It's going to selectively remove components of our signal based off of their frequency. So we have a couple of terms that we uh, use to describe this. We talk about the pass band of a filter, which are the frequencies that are allowed to pass through the filter and actually make it onto data acquisition and become part of our final uh, instrument output. And there's also the stop band. So that's the frequencies that are blocked by a filter, so are not allowed to become part of our final instrument output. And the transition between the pass band and the stop band is usually known as the cutoff frequency. Okay, so we can implement filters digitally or with analog hardware. Um, so in this class, we'll talk about building RC filters, which is the simplest type of analog filter. There are more advanced types of filters out there. You can make active filters that use op amps and things like that. Um, typically, you talk about that in your electronics class. Here, we're just going to focus on the basics and just know that if you need more filter performance, you can look at some of these more advanced architectures. Um, you could also go and use a digital filter, right? So we can mimic what an analog filter does um, with math, doing that as mathematical operations on data that we've already collected. And there's some advantage to doing that. It's very easy to change the filter when you have a digital um, filter. There's filter blocks built right into LabVIEW that you can use to process your data that way. Um, but you can't do things like build an anti-aliasing filter for your data um, in LabVIEW because your, your high frequencies that would be form aliases have already formed aliases after you've sampled your data. So be sure to check out the aliasing video um, for background on that also. Um, so a lot of times you'll see a combination of both because the more filtering that you can do, uh, generally the better your performance in terms of signal to noise is going to be. Um, filters do tend to add some lag time, so your instrument will respond slower, but it will have less noise in it. That's kind of the trade-off that you have with filters. All right, the key concept here also is that there's no such thing as a perfect filter. Um, we can't make a filter that has a perfectly sharp cutoff between the pass band and the stop band. Um, generally what happens is the filter does what we call rolling off. So as we get close to the cutoff frequency, some of the signal that's in our pass band is actually going to get attenuated or reduced a little bit, so its magnitude will become less. And then as you get to the stop band, there's always a little bit of the signal that's in the stop band that makes it through the filter. Uh, so the filter will reduce it a lot, but it won't ever take it perfectly to zero also. Okay, And then there's some transition in between the uh, pass band and the stop band where you get some attenuation, some reduction in the magnitude of those frequency components, but not a perfect clean cutoff in that, uh, at, that you would want with an ideal filter here. So we have a graphic here that shows kind of how this works. So along the bottom, you have a frequency related to the cutoff frequency. Um, where you're equal to the, the cutoff frequency, that's where we start to go into the transition band where we have this, this roll off, you can see the magnitude of the signal is getting reduced in the stop band there, but it's not going perfectly to zero. All right, let's talk about some types of filters um, that you could use based off of the different characteristics or different frequencies that you want to 
uh, either have or not have in your signal. So the first type we can talk about is a low pass filter. So that allows low frequencies to pass um, and stops higher frequencies. So this is what we use for anti-aliasing because we can get rid of high frequency components um, from our signal that would become aliases and allow just the lower frequencies that has our actual signal in it uh, to go into our instrument. All right, so a simple way to do this is with one resistor and one capacitor. Um, you can calculate the cutoff frequency here based off of it's 1 over 2 pi RC. That's an equation that you'll become quite familiar with when you're working with RC filters. We see that a lot for cutting or determining the cutoff frequency, All right? A lot of times we get asked, how do you actually hook this up to your instrument? How do you implement this? Um, so here's a, a little schematic I've, I've added here where generally your, your V out from your transducer stage of your, your instrument is going to be fed into the filter and then the filter itself gets connected to your DAC, right? So your data acquisition happens after you filtered your data. So what you would do is you would connect um, your V out from your transducer to the voltage in, positive voltage in on the filter schematic that you have. Your filter also needs to be connected to ground. And then your DAC gets connected to the voltage out, how it's labeled on the, the circuit diagram. So that's a general to all of these uh, filter circuits that we'll be looking at throughout this lecture. And generally, most filters uh, will have some sort of nomenclature where it looks like this. Um, so you can use those for if you're interpreting a different uh, filter circuit diagram and know how to put that into your, uh, your instrument. All right. You can also have a, a high pass filter, um, which allows your higher frequencies to pass through it and blocks out lower frequencies, right? So we'll stop things like a DC offset. So these can be really useful if you're working with an optical signal that's not DC, so it has some sort of frequency associated with it. But things like the sun have a DC component because the sun is just always on. Um, you can remove that that background ambient light with a high pass filter is a really good way to do that. Um, so the cutoff frequency, you use the same formula to calculate what that is. And you can see it's basically the same circuit as the low pass filter. All we've done is swap, swap the positions of the capacitor and the resistor here. All right, other filters that we have, you can also have a band pass filter, which is kind of a combination of a low pass filter and a high pass filter but it allows a specific range of frequencies to pass through it while blocking all other frequencies that are either higher or lower than the pass band. Um, so this is good if you have a very specific frequency that you know your signal is at, you can block everything but that one frequency um, and reduce a lot of noise in your signal that way, right? And this now will have two uh, cutoff frequencies as an upper and a lower cutoff frequency that you use the same um, RC filter formula to calculate the cutoff frequencies in both of those. You'll notice this is actually just a uh, high pass filter followed by a low pass filter um, in the circuit diagram. If you look at the, the previous two circuit diagrams in this lecture, you'll see that you, we've just taken those and put them together to create a band pass filter. All right, and then we have sort of the opposite of a band pass filter is a band stop filter. Um, which will is sometimes called a notch filter also. And what it does is it removes a specific range of frequencies from your signal while allow, allowing everything else to go through. Um, one of the applications you'll see for this is because in North America, our electrical grid runs at 60 hertz. It's really common in electrical signals that you'll see a 60 hertz sine wave that appearing in your signal that you're trying to collect. It's just picking up the noise coming from the electrical grid. We typically call that line noise. And if you want to get rid of that in your signal, you can make a notch filter that's designed to filter out 60 hertz and a little bit of frequency on either side of that and just remove that one frequency component from your signal. Um, so that's a common application of that also. All right. If you want to improve your filter's performance, so if you want to have a sharper transition between the pass band and the stop band, what we can do is we can increase the filter order, right? The easiest way to do this with an RC filter is we, we call it cascading um, stages of the filter together. So we just build copies of the filter and use them in series. 
Um, and what you get with that is you get a cleaner transition between the stop band and the, the pass band. So you get a sharper cutoff. Um, so you get less noise going through your, your signal that way, right? Um, so that's an option also if you really want to do some extra fills and really try and clean up your noise. Sometimes you'll just stack up a whole bunch of these RC filters together to, uh, to get a cleaner transition that way. All right, how does this apply to your design challenge? So what you're doing in this challenge is you're trying to see a very small optical signal. It's gonna be a faint uh, reflection as you get really far away from your, your source and you're trying to see your reflection from a long distance away. The light is spreading out across the room so you have less and less light to work with the further away your reflection is. Um, and any ambient light in the lab is going to show up as noise. Your optical sensor is sensitive to all the visible light and infrared light in the room. So you, we need to figure out how do we block everything that's not that reflected laser. Um, so the solution here is we want to pulse that laser at a specific frequency that we know. And we'll design our instrument so that it filters out everything except for that one frequency. And the better job you do filtering, uh, the further away you'll be able to see that reflection, okay? Because you'll have less noise in your reading. You can use both analog and digital filters, or s either one or some combination thereof, uh, to reduce the noise in your system. And the team that, or the uh, the individual that has the uh, the instrument that can see the reflection from furthest away is going to get some extra credit on this assignment. Right. So that's a little bit of background about filters and how you can use them for your design challenge. Um, so swing by the lab, ask questions, and uh, try out building some of these filters to see if you can reduce the noise in your system so you can see that reflection from a really long distance away. All right, we'll see you in the lab.